Okay, good to see everybody. Appreciate you being here. A good day of practice, good week of practice. A lot of energy. Uh, continue to try to improve every single day at everything we do. So I'm proud of the guys. Appreciate the way they've been working. And uh, we're excited about the next game. We're excited about the next uh, chapter after the next game, obviously, in the playoffs. So with that, I wanted to uh, jump into the injury thing first. Uh, might as well get that out of the way. But uh, just wanted to share this with you, kind of really about Lamar's injury, because I know you guys ask every week, and everybody wants to know. And I understand that, completely understand that. I mean, you know, I want to know every week, every day. You know, you kind of ask and see where we're at. But um, there really are no updates on that. And that's the, the biggest thing I know that, you know, you know, maybe people, you know, fans and media and, and everybody might get a little frustrated about. But it's just kind of the nature of it. And uh, when we have an update, uh, definitely you'll have it. And um, But injuries are so hard to predict. And that's why when I get up here sometimes and I, I'll, I'll refrain from saying it's how long will it be, you know. It's, you might think it's going to be some number of weeks or you might day or some number of days or whatever, but you really don't know because they all respond differently. And uh, then later I feel bad because, well, it didn't turn out to be the number that we originally thought it was going to be. So I try to say, well, I'm really not going to talk about that. You know, and kind of sometimes people think, well, he's hiding something or whatever. And it's really not. I might be hiding something sometimes, but uh, not in this case. But, but the truth is, is we just really don't know. So I know, I know everybody's working as hard as they can, um, you know, uh, to, to, for Lamar's working as hard as he can, the trainers are working as hard as they can, and um, can't, can't wait for him to get back, obviously, just like everybody else. So that's where we're at with that. He won't be playing in this game. And, uh, you know, we'll be hopeful for next week, and we'll just see where we're at then, okay? Okay, what questions do you have? I mean, along those lines, John, we've, we've seen Tyler has not thrown the ball much, at least in the first practice we've seen. Is that is that a real concern going into Sunday? Or what well, he, he could play Sunday. Thanks, Charles. Um, he, uh, yeah, he's got a tendonitis issue, you know, his shoulder and things. So uh, we just decided not to not to put him through that. You know, he's, he's been involved in all the walkthroughs. He's been involved in all the mental work. So uh, I think there's, you know, a really good chance he could play on Sunday. Uh, but, again, uh, if that doesn't happen, then, you know, it doesn't happen. So, uh, but um, hopeful for that. What's your reaction to the league's decision on how the postseason would be seated and still having a chance at the home playoff game potentially via a coin flip? Yeah, you know, I didn't give that too much thought. You know, it wasn't something that, you know, as a coach, we really had time to be involved with. We were working on the game planning and the preparation. And um, I think that was at a league level. You know, the thing I appreciate and I think the way I understand it, the number one consideration was DeMar Hamlin, his health, and his family. And that's why the game, you know, was. Uh, originally postponed and then, and then eventually canceled. So, and then after that, there's there's a hundred considerations, you know, in terms of uh, logistics, competitive fairness, fans, all the partners involved with the league, all those things. I'm sure were taken into account, right? And uh, so I'm just like, well, I can't think about all that. You know, I'm thinking we got thinking about the the Bengals and the playoffs. So, um, whatever they do is is good with good with me personally. And uh, we're just excited to go play the game on Sunday, and we're going to try to play our best football. And that's really what we're thinking about. Coach, given all those factors, DeMar Hamlin and obviously whatever playoff scenarios and the coin flip and everything, how do you feel like your guys have responded though mentally and emotionally given all the 8 million distractions going around? I feel they've been great. You know, they've been very thoughtful about it, you know, and I think they've done a really great job in terms of uh, reaching out to, you know, family and friends that might be connected to, to the Mars family and also to the Bills or, or to the even Bengals. You know, we, we've got relationships all over the league. Uh, it's it's a it's it's good that way, and they've been focused on on their preparation for this game, 100%. Uh, I've seen it every single day. They're locked in, and they're 100% focused on good good meetings, good practices, and playing their best game on Sunday. And I'm proud of them for that. John, I know you you had you had already said on Monday that your your inclination was probably going to be to play your guys because there was going to be seating considerations on the line. The fact that home field could be on on the line you know under the scenario it's just improved does that even add to that, that thought, you know I, no and I just we're going to play this thing for short term and long term considerations so you know we're thinking about the short term uh, those things that you're talking about whatever they end up being and, and did end up being today and then uh, long term considerations being the most important thing is being as prepared as we can for the playoffs you really can't sit too many guys out I mean this is not the preseason you know you don't have an unlimited number of guys so it's not as big a deal as I think it's sometimes made out to be but, um, you know, our plan is to go up there and, and win the football game and do the best we can to win the football game. I'm sure the Bengals are going to be looking at it the same way, and I'm sure it'll be a hard-fought game. Coach, T. Higgins didn't play in that first game. What's, he's probably playing this game. What's he bring to that offense? 
Well, yeah, he's just uh, he's a weapon. I mean, you know, they've got they've got probably one of the most uh, some of the best offensive weapons in football. You know, T does so many things. He runs the whole route tree. He's great downfield. He's also great underneath. Uh, they even run screens with him, catch and run screens. And they do kind of what they do. They do with all their guys. You know, Tyler Boyd does the same things that Chase does. Uh, of course, Hayden Hurst has added a, a big dimension, obviously. We know all about Hayden. We respect him. Very talented player. Uh, they've got Joe Mixon and Perrine's a heck of a back, too. I mean, and then, of course, it all is built, you know, we call it the Joe Burrow offense. You know, the way they've built their their, their West Coast uh, offense is, is, is kind of toward Joe Burrow's um, skill set, which is obviously, you know, really, really good. So we respect them. We know how good they are, and we're going to try to play our best defensive game. How does uh, Anthony Brown look to, as far as, I'm guessing he got most of the first team reps this week. How does he look? Yeah, really valuable for Anthony to get the reps, you know. And, uh, and Tyler was right there getting all the reps mentally, but Anthony got the reps physically and, uh, you know, couldn't do anything but help him as a player, you know. So uh, he'll be the backup and uh, he'll be ready to go if needed. John, with the possibility of playing the Bengals again in the playoffs, even as early as next week, if things shake out that way, uh, is there a focus on how much you have to limit showing the Bengals as you have, might play them again? Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's there is. Uh, you have to think that way. I'm sure they're thinking the same way. Uh, you got to think of it as a two-game operation. Do you know much about the uh, the coin flip process? Do you get to call the coin flip? Do you, if, if if you guys win, do you have a? <laughs> Everybody knows the answer to that, you know. Do you have a, a designated coin flip person? <laughs> Why are you asking me that? You know, <laughs> just, just for know. fun, just for fun. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. No. That's not the that's not analytics. That's not there. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of analytics done on coin flips, flips actually, believe it or not. Yeah, oh, has there been? I don't know. Oh, I thought you said there were. <laughs> well, I don't know. Oh. I'm just throwing it out there, you know. Important coin flip you've ever had in football or outside of it. Did you ever have a really, <laughs> did you ever have a debate with a friend? Brian, down to, like, yeah. Like, like in <laughs> life? Yeah. No, I've had, yeah, I've had, yeah, heck yeah, more important coin flips than this in life. I hesitate to share the details of those with you, though. So the Ravens did have a coin flip over with Dallas on a draft pick one time because yeah. it, yeah. it was the strength of schedule was the same. And well, I've been told that George Kokinas, you guys know George, yeah. is 3 and 0 on league coin flips. So there it is. It's there, yeah, and they've been draft related type things. Uh -huh. That's what I've been told okay. in the board building. So George, maybe he's practicing his coin flip <laughs> skills right now as we speak, but. John, uh, is Deshaun's illness going to be, are you just going to something to monitor for, for Sunday's game? Deshaun Jackson? Yeah. Yeah, he's been sick all week. So, um, you know, if he can make it back, uh, we'll see. I mean, that's a big we'll see. All right. Great. Thanks, okay, Bill. thanks. thanks.